Monica, the queen of all good and perfect things, to her son, Jesus Christ. And we just walk out into the Holy Spirit. I know that rest of this congregation gives an honor to the angel of this house, Bishop M.C. Johnson, yeah. our assistant pastor, Elder Johnson, and to the first ladies, and to those in creation and those who are that in Christ. I greet you here, Sweet Haven, Holy Church of God, where the yes. move of God is, is, is in the atmosphere. Yes. Yes. As they set the, the, the atmosphere for praise and worship, we just come to lift up the name of Jesus. So whichever social media platform that you are meeting us in, we're just glad that you're meeting us there. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. We just want to lift up the name of Jesus and have a good time. And, and just we just want to praise the Lord because this, someone says, this is the lay, day that the Lord has made and I shall do what? Rejoice in it. You make a decision to rejoice in it. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our scripture done by Brother LaDon Humphrey, followed by a prayer by Sister Shelley Barrett. from Acts chapter 4, 10th to the 12th verse. And it reads, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand here before the whole. This is the stone which was set off at naught of you, of you builders which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Giving honor to God and to our bishop and our first lady and to everyone in their respective places. Let us go to the throne of grace. Oh, Heavenly Father, it's again that we come before you, thanking you for our last night lying down. And then you breathed on us this morning to rise with the use and activity of our limbs. And God, we don't take that but for granted, but we say thank you on this morning. Thank you for our health and our strength. Thank you for the blood that's still running warm in our veins on this morning. And God, we just say thank you for just being who you are, that awesome deliverer, that way maker, the way maker on this morning. God, we just come to uplift your name, come to give you the glory, come to give you the praise because all praises belong to you. And God, we just say thank you for keeping us in 2021, that we're in the month of September, God, that the year is about to get ready to go out, God, but you has kept us because you are faithful. And God, we say thank you on this morning. Thank you for keeping our families. Thank you for keeping our children. Thank you, thank you for keeping our marriages you, on today. God, thank you for keeping our pastor and thank the first you, lady. Thank you for keeping our assistant pastor and thank his you, wife. God, thank you for keeping every member here at Sweet Haven. God, we come to give you the praise. We come to uplift your name, God. There is no other name that we can call on because when we say the name of Jesus, there is power in your name, God. And God, I thank you on this morning because I call on your name, God, that you would go to CHKD Hospital on this morning, that you would touch my granddaughter, God, because I know you got a plan, God, that I will trust the process on this morning. And God, I praise you that I know one day, God, she will be able 
once a day, God, that we will live only for you, that we will stand on your word, God. And I bless you on today that you bless the speaker of the hour, God. God, let your words fall fresh. Let your anointing fall fresh, God. Let your Holy Spirit fall fresh on us on today, God. Bless us throughout the week, God. Keep us, God. Keep our health. Keep our mind stayed on you. That it will be kept in perfect peace. God, we praise you and we glorify you. And I give you all the glory. And I give you all the praise on this morning, God, that's due unto you. This is my prayer, God. Bless our sick and shut in. Bless the ones that's going through the COVID-19, God. You have kept our bodies on today. And I thank you, God. And I praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, bless your name, God. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You reign on the cross. Humphrey for I want to thank Brother Humphrey for the, the scripture. I want to thank Sister Barrow for that that prayer. Yes, Lord. Uh, when she was praying, she said, God, I, I trust the process. Yes, Lord. God, I, I, I trust the process. Gotta get a little bit more. Kevin, Minister McCray, gotta get a little bit more. He said, he said, God, I, I, I trust the process. And yes. and many of us sometimes we fail to to trust the process right. of, of what God is getting ready to take us from and take us to. 
we just gotta gotta trust the process that all things work together for good for those that are That's love right. Christ and are called Amen. according to his purpose. But this morning, I'm just happy for those two twins. They're fraternal twins. They don't look alike, but they call grace and mercy. Because when I was sitting at the table last night, uh, celebrating my youngest daughter, 20th birthday. She's no longer a teenager. She's 20 years of age. I, I, I see grace and mercy because she could have turned out like her dad. And I, I, have, I wasn't good in my 20s. I, I, I wasn't pure in my 20s. I was still a work in progress in my 30s. He still molded me in my 40s. Yes. And then on my 50s, in my 50s, I'm headed to where he wants me to be. So I got to trust the process. Yes. And in trusting the process, you got to understand the word. You have to understand that there's power in words. And I, I, I'm reading a book right now. It's about a little boy that was walking around town. And while he walked around town, everywhere he go, he would collect a word. If he was in New York, he would collect a word. If he was in Brooklyn, he would, if he was in California, he would collect a word. If he was down south, he would collect a word. But so one day, in the book, this little boy was going up a hill. He tripped and he fell. The first thing he reached for was a word. He tripped and fell, but he reached for a word. So I let you know when, 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 when you're in this life, there's going to be some ups and some downs, but yeah, you can always right. reach for the word. Yeah. The word says trust the process. Yeah, that's right. The word says when the enemies come to eat of my flesh, they should stumble and fall because he encamped a host of angels around us. Yeah. That should be enough to shout you right there because when that dirty co-worker or that boss is getting on your nerves, he has already got an army already around you. Is there any believers in the building No, knows there's an army already around you that he go and prepares a table before you in the yeah. presence of your enemy? If I got any believers, I double dare you to clap your hands that there's an angel assigned to you in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, there's an angel signed. Though. There's mercy and grace that assigned to you that's pushing you to your destiny is praise and worship time. We are grateful
You know, sometimes you feel like you're in this thing by yourself. What's the need of going to church? What's the need of praying? But you have to make up your mind that no matter what comes or what goes, I've got to do it for me. If everybody in the building come on say, I got to do it for me. Nobody will be able to stand before God but you. called the five heartbeats yeah. I must have saw that movie uh, five times at the movie theater one of my favorite movies is is when he the favorite part of uh, it's got two parts of that movie when he says can't nobody sing like Eddie Kane Jr. I got some people in my age group and the second part is is that when he had been through everything in life He reached for the word. Yeah. And when he said, he said, I got a surprise. I have somebody that I want you to see. And he, and, he, and he came to church and it was he and his wife. Uh -huh. They had reconciled and they were singing a song, I feel like yeah. going yeah. on. Yeah. Right. He was singing that from a place of, of hurt. That's right. From a place of pain that I, I've been into the bottom of the bottomless. But now I feel like going on. As we end 2020, I tell you to keep your foot on the gas. Don't, don't let up. Because there are some things out there for you. There are some things out there for you.
Mine is a little short, but I feel like going on. I got more bills than I do months, and more bills than I do money, and more months than I do money. But I'm gonna go on. Hey, 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 amen. That's right. Amen. Hey, how many of you are ready for the word? How many of you are ready for the word? Last, last Sunday, our, our pastor preached a raiment word. He called me out of left field while I was looking down when he said what his subject was. I said, my pastor have lost his mind. But then he made it clear. He made the word so plain. And that word resonated with me throughout the week. I took little bits of that nugget of that word. That, that, it, that word wasn't for nobody. Somebody said, eat the fish and leave the bones. And I, I, I took the bones in the fish. You know how you, you fry it real hard when you're down south, bro, Humphrey? Yeah, you can fry the fish real hard. You can eat the bones and the, the fish, too. Yeah. So it was, it was one of them type words for me. But today, we have another man of God, our assistant pastor, who's going to come give us the word of life. So I ask you to stand to your feet. And point your hand toward this man of God when he comes to the podium after this song and say, preach the word, Elder Johnson. Preach, preach the word. word. Put your hands together out there. Don't you know that trouble don't last? Everybody clap your hands. Yeah. Trouble don't last. Oh! 
trouble don't last always. Yeah. Amen. You know, that's the title of my message. Trouble don't last always. Give an honor to God, to Bishop Johnson, Minister Blackwell, Ella Gibbs, our First Lady, Chairman of our Deacon Board in his absence, Mother of the Church, Mother Wilkins. She take a licking, but she keep on ticking. God is good, isn't he? You know, <clears throat> I was going to sing, I feel like going on. But the choir sung that. Then it sung, Trouble Don't Last Always. I was going to sing that. <clears throat> but if the stars don't see and if the wind keep on blowing my life my soul has been Storm, keep on raising in your life. The night from the day. You can't tell the night from the day. Don't know how I'm going to make it. Sometime I don't want to face the next day. I don't want to answer the phone because I know it's a bill collector. Bank account almost on zero. Car problem. Got to get it inspected. Insurance running out. But if the storms keep on. <laughs> keep on winning. Keep on. Blow in my life. Things just not going right. I just feel like giving up. I just can't make it. <laughs> thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Psalms 23 to Bishop Johnson, the first lady. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Trouble don't last always. That part of the scripture in Psalms, David wrote that, and that was his personal testimony. He had been through so much. 
trials and tribulations on every hand. And he didn't know which way to turn. He had tried to do everything right. But sometimes the devil come in our life. And sometimes we do things that we don't supposed to do. Sometimes we fight against the flesh. He know that he had Belsheba and know that it was wrong. But ever, at that time, he let flesh take over his life. He said, I'm the king, so I can do anything I want. <laughs> well, I feel so bad for what I have done. I, what I'll do is I'll call Uriah and I'll put him in the front of the, the highest battle. But he didn't know, although God said, I love you, and David, but you have messed up. All of us have a song, something that we can quote to ourselves when we get in trouble. Trouble don't last always. David know that I could do whatever I wanted to do. If you're a billionaire, you don't worry about money. You worry about keeping your money. If you broke, you worry about how to get some money. But this morning we are talking about David that <clears throat> David <clears throat> came from nothing. David was a like poor, I guess he 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 he, he had to do what other other people didn't want to do. But I'm here to let you know this morning that once once God start promoting you, once God start uh, uh, picking you up and, and letting you know that I'm God, you start, you be a shot caller. I, I can call, I can do this, I can do that, I can do, I, I was looking at the, the guy that's in North Korea, he just can say, I want to kill that person and and him killed. There ain't nothing said about it. But he got to realize one day it's somebody that sit high and look at low. <laughs> David said, well, uh, I got to get myself together. It, it was so much Pressure, can you imagine you have done wrong and you have lost favor with God? It's a bad feeling. Sometimes you want to go and, Lord, forgive me. But then you say, I might do that same old thing again. But God said, I'm a forgiving God. Amen. Good Lord, good Lord. Trouble don't last our ways now. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we look at David and David started writing the songs. And in and, 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 and the first song he said, I shall be like a tree. Good Lord. 
planted by the what? And I shall not be moved. David know that he had done wrong. He know because of his action he had to suffer the consequences. For we do something wrong, a little voice comes to us and say, you shouldn't do that. A little voice comes to you and say, you know, that's not right. That's not the devil telling you that. The devil is telling you to go ahead and do it. <laughs> but God comes in and that little still voice and say, you know, you shouldn't say said that. You didn't treat that person right. Whenever you do something, your conscience comes well, somewhere back to you and tell you whether you was right or wrong. Your voice, something, your something within you tell you you didn't you didn't do it right. You didn't treat them right. It might be a a day, it might be a year. But some come back and tell you, you didn't do it. You did, you're not right. You know, and it takes a lot for a person to go and say, I'm sorry. But I hear this morning, after David had did what he had to do, I saw him when he started asking God to forgive him. When he started asking the Lord, I have done wrong. <laughs> Somebody say, God is a forgiving God. He said, Lord, I, I know that I'm not right. I know I shouldn't have done what I did. But that flesh is a mess. Bishop always say, don't get one-on-one -on -one with a woman. A woman got more pull than 10,000 mules. You might think you got the Holy Ghost. But sometimes that Holy Ghost will leave you. And you, the Bible says it don't strive with man always. Say, I'm not going to do this no more. I got a bad habit and and I need to break this habit. I'm not going to do that no more. But you find yourself slipping in the darkness. Good Lord, good Lord. You say, you I look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. So sometimes you got to go to God and fall down on your knees. And you got to say, Lord, Lord, I want you to help me. I don't know what to do. I've been fasting, I've been praying, it seems like something ain't happening. But I believe you got to be sincere when you go to the Lord. Because God heard your prayers when you first get there. David started crying out to God. And he said, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit because I know 
that I done, done right. I know that I have messed up. But God, I'm asking you for your forgiveness. And God, if you forgive me, I'll sit down by the water and I'll start writing. If you forgive me, most so many times you say, Lord, if you forgive me this time, I won't do it no more. But that flesh is a mess. And it start getting in the way. Say, I'm going to stop this whole thing I'm doing. But then you find yourself slipping in the darkness. But I stopped by here this morning to let you know that trouble don't last always. We be may endure for a night. But David said, joy comes in the morning. Can you shout, yeah? David was so despondent. He didn't know what to do. He said he sat down uh, and started writing. And when he got down to around the fifth verse, he said, they prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Then they anointed my head before. Whoa, yeah. Surely and goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Just cause God don't come when we want him. Somebody say he's right on time. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on that name Jesus, Mary baby, born in Bethlehem, came down to 40 and two generations. He didn't have to come this far. He could have stopped in miles. He could have stopped on Jupiter. But God said, no, I got to go down. I got some people down there that need to be saved. I got some people that are down there that's going through trials and tribulations. I got some people down there that don't know the way. And if I don't go right now, uh -huh, somebody will be lost. Uh -huh. But I uh -huh, letting them know uh -huh, that trouble don't last always. You took my mama. Uh -huh, you took my daddy. Uh -huh, but our Lord, you left me here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Trouble don't last always. Uh -huh. Can you shout, yeah. Uh -huh. David said, Lord, uh -huh. If you created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit, I will serve you until I die. I will love you until I die. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want her. He picked it up in 27 songs. When things won't look right, he said, you hang on in there. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And I, and I, and I will strengthen that heart. Can you shout, yeah? The Lord is right there beside us. The Lord will forgive us of all our sins. Trouble don't last always. Trouble. Don't last always. David says, surely goodness ha, and mercy shall follow me. She'll follow me all the days and nights. Need him? Hey, listen. 
God for that. We thank God for that word. Trouble don't trouble don't last always. You know that God himself said David was a man after his own heart. And so when you read the 23rd song, for me David could have stopped at the first verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Period. He could have put a pen in it right there. But he he went down to the fifth verse because he knew that you were going to have adversaries. He said, I prepare a table before me. The, the part that people miss, he said, prepares a table before me. So that means that table is just for me. And it's in the presence of my enemy. Then he said, he anoints my head with oil. My cup's running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David was making a declaration. From beginning to end, I will serve you, Lord. Through my ups and my downs, God, I will serve you. Some of us have to have a David mentality in some things. So as hard as David sinned, the heart of David repent. Because David had a heart of repentance. He knew if I, if I just held on to the word when I, when I fall down, if I collect the words along the way, when I fall down, I could grab a word. And today we receive the word. The only thing you have to do is take it in. I call it self-application. Pick the part that works for you. Whether it's surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Or is it the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. We thank God for the word. And we thank God for the giver of the word. Come on, let's give Elder Johnson a hand clap of praise. To Mother Annie Wilkins, who's sitting here looking so young. Amen. Amen. I, I, was, I was watching. Uh, my wife said she accused me of, and God bless my wife, because, um, you know, she's going through it with, 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 our, with our mother-in-law, but to my mother-in-law, but to God be the glory, because all things work for the good. Amen. But I was watching Tara as her mom was coming in, right? Uh, you don't think I was, I was, I was watching you, Tara. She was like, no, uh, uh let's go up a little bit farther. And, 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 and just like a good mother, because I see the rose transitioning. No, we're going to sit right here. And Mother Ricks looked at her, and he, she took her seat. Mother Ricks, I wish my mother was like you, because my mother don't follow directions too well. I tell her, stay at home. She said, I'm going outside. I tell her, you can't go to the grocery store. She said, I'm covered by the blood. I said, Mom, you're covered by the blood. You've been vaccinated, but some people around you haven't been vaccinated. So we, we thank God for our elderly. We thank God for our elderly. Our bishop is. So let your friends know that every Sunday here, we're going to be giving our spiritual vaccinations. 
on Sundays, we're gonna be on whatever Sunday he picked, he's gonna be giving our spiritual vaccination. You may be have been vaccinated, but there's another vaccination. It's called the blood. That blood was sinners plunge and they wash away all guilt and shame. That that blood that was drawn from Emmanuel's vein, that blood. Amen. Amen. We thank God for those that have pressed their way to be here. But how many of you know that this church cannot function without you? Without you and your contributions and what you mean to the ministry. If you've been blessed by this ministry, just raise your hand. If you've been better than blessed by this ministry, raise both hands. I know this, this ministry has been a, a blessing, uh, not only financial, financially, but spiritually, emotionally. Uh, it, we, have, we have a great church. We, we have a great branch of Zion here. And so as we sow into this branch of Zion today, as we sow into this ministry today, as the deacons bring the basket around, we, we're going to sow. We're going to do Corinthians. We're going we're gonna to pay our tithes and offerings. We're going to purpose in our heart what we're going to give. And we're going to give it cheerfully unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. So standing all over the building. Standing all over the building, if you can. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity for participating in this part of, of your worship service because giving is worship. Giving is part of the service because without these, your people, Father God, this ministry wouldn't be where it is. So God, we ask you to bless them, Father God, whatever they stand in need for. It may not be financially. It may be health, Father God. Whatever they stand in need for, Father God, as they sow into this ministry, Father God, bless them. And even if they don't have it to sow, Father God, bless them anyway, Father God, because you're a God that can, will, and is able to do so, Father God, as they plant into fertile ground, Father God, let them reap a harvest, Father God. Whatever harvest they stand in need of, let them reap it right now. This is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We are now in the hands of the ushers. Our offerings, let them be holy. Sing it. Holy, 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 Lord. Let's give our man of the man of God, our Bishop N.C. Johnson, as he as he as he comes. Come on, let's let's give it up for our pastor. Amen.
bless you. You may be seated. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm happy, amen, to have experienced the word today that trouble does not last always. Uh, no matter what comes, it goes away. How many had a good week last week? Had a good week? Amen. And truly, the Lord has kept us. Uh, we haven't been sick. Uh, and for those who've been sick, you're well now. Last Sunday, Ella Johnson was sick and felt like he was probably dying. And, and, and don't you know all kinds of thoughts run through your mind when you get real sick? And you don't know if you're going to live or die, but amen. And James Cleveland said, and this too shall pass. Amen. Don't, don't, don't just continue to uh, uh, saturate yourself into your own pitiness, having a pity party for yourself. Amen. Hold your head up. Amen. Say, so we're going to get through this. The enemy comes to steal everything that's good. How many of y'all believe that? Everything that's good in your life, he will try and take it away from you. Amen. So he's on his job. He's trying to deceive the very elect, the Bible says. Amen. People who have been in the church for a long time, trouble, amen, has washed them away. Amen. When a storm really comes, a, a strong storm comes, it will wash your house away. If it's not built on a what? Amen. Sharon used to sing a song. I would ask her to sing it, but it's almost time to go. But she said, where will I go when there's what? nothing else to turn to? Who would I lean on? Y'all heard that song? And then it went on and said, I go to the rock. Uh-huh. Because Jesus said he is the rock. Amen. He's a solid rock. Amen. So again, God bless you. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, Elder Johnson, for the word. Amen. Thank you for our voices. Amen. Singing. Amen. Today, the musician. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For uh, Minister Keith on drums. Amen. Back there beating the drums. Uh, thank God for uh, all the uh, photographers, the uh, uh, camera people. Amen. For the people who work back there on the, uh, the videos and the Facebooks and the YouTubes. Thank you all so much for supporting this ministry. If it had not been for you, we would be where we are right now. Amen. We're getting ready, amen, to have some uh, new trustees, amen, uh, to be uh, uh, brought to the church, amen, on next week, seven days from now, amen. I wish, amen, that all members would be here, amen, at 1, at 1, at 12.30, what time do we get out of church, 12, amen, at 12.30 next Sunday. Amen. 12.30 next Sunday, we'll have a business meeting. I'm putting it out from the pulpit now. Amen. We're going to be dealing with new trustees. Amen. I need every member of this church to be here. If you're a member of this church, don't go to the beach. Don't go to the, uh, don't go to the Ocean City. If you can go to the Ocean City and get back here by 12.30, then you can go. Amen. I need to see every member who's got your name on this book. Amen. Next Sunday, 1230, we got business meeting. If there's any visitors, we're going to let them go home. But all members will stay here. Please. Amen. Please, ma'am, and please, sir. Amen. Talking about trustees. Amen for the church body. I need you to help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Come in. Because, amen, you're going to get a chance to Say I or nay, amen. In the, in the Congress, they tell you, let's do it by uh, electric vote, amen. But we're saved and sanctified. We're not going to have any problems when it says I do and some says I don't, amen. If someone says I don't, it's okay. We're still going to love you. But we got to get more I do's than I don'ts. Everybody understand that? The Bible tells us in Scripture that people who are saying you're saved, you don't even take that brother to court. You don't even take them to the law. But we got more church folk going to jail. I mean, go, going to court in their own court folk. But I want to let you know, amen, we've got to get back to the roots of the Bible. And we've got to study the word. Amen. 
we had Bible study, amen, uh, uh, last uh, Thursday night, Mr. Cathcart taught a very, very uh, great uh, lesson on last week. Amen. amen. And things that have happened in the past, you can see it happening in the church right now. Amen. How many know that one day you're going to die? How many of y'all know that? And the Bible said after death, what? Now, what is judgment? Judgment, judgment is going to let you know. He's going to let you know if you've you passed the test. He's going to judge you. He said we've got to give an account to every idle word, every idle action. We will have to give an account to God. And you're not going to be to blame nobody but yourself. And then after he judges you and you don't pass the test, he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. What is he going to judge you on? He's going to judge you on what you're doing right now. Every Sunday, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He's going to judge you on that. And then when you die, I'm going to tell you this story. And then I'm going to sit down. Last week, Sharon got up and went to the Venetian blind. And she saw a green hopper grass on the window behind the Venetian blind. Nut! Nut! There's a bug. Jay Clampett said, I come a running. We take the, I grab the hopper grass. He's a green hopper grass with two eyes. Like. So I grab him and I carry him on the outside, Mother, Mother Mitchell. Let him go. Everything is fine. This morning around 7.05, Sharon goes down the stairs. Not, not. There's a frog <laughs> on the window. Oh, frog on the window. Oh, I said, oh, Lord. I go down the stairs, and I'm a little bit scared of the frog because I don't want him to turn me into a toad. So I went out and got my thing I pick up paper with. And I didn't really want to kill it. You know what I mean? You don't really want to kill something. So he, he, he scooted. He jumped on the window, jumped on the, under, the, under the chair. I lost him. I said, I got to find him because if she see him in here again, I'm going to have problems on my hand. Yeah, I'm telling y'all the truth. Lord, I'm telling the truth. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I looked for him in the window in the dining room. Couldn't find him. So I'm telling him, go in the living room. I looked in the living room. There he's on the window in the living room. What kind of frog is this? What is this? So when I finally caught him, mother, I caught him, I squared him like that. Carried him on the outside, put him on the grass. And I was saying, Lord, why are you, the last Sunday was a hobble grass that was green with big eyes. Now it's a frog, he got big eyes, and I got big eyes. What are you trying to tell me? <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna get what I'm trying to say to you. I'm saying, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Frogs, eyes, all of my eyes look like me. So then I got my dictionary, my encyclopedia, and looked up the word frog, and how many different kinds of frogs there were, and they said the frogs got some kind of eyelid stuff. Now, y'all all know that I, I canceled my appointment to go get my eyes done. <laughs> Just this week. So I said, Lord, maybe you're trying to let me know that you can hear my eyes. Now, two mornings, two, now two weeks now, we're going to find something big on the window, and they had big eyes like net. So then I said, Lord, let me touch this frog. See if he got the power. I'm telling y'all what happened this morning. So when I got ready to touch him, he said, whoo. jumped off me already. But then I went back again. I rubbed his head, put him out in the grass. 
And I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Am I going to get a lot of money? I'm saying green. I wrote down green. What are you telling me? Frog. Grasshopper. I had Sharon this morning. All those things, that grasshopper and the frog, what they have in common? They were green and they hopped. And they had big eyes. I think God is ready to either take me away. I think God is ready to, to exalt me. And if God's ready to exalt me, if God's ready to take me away, how many of y'all want to go with me? See that, you know, hanging in the house. Not even my own brother ain't put his hand up. Because all y'all want to stay here. Right, as long as you can. That's where I feel sometimes. I feel like I'm here by myself. People don't want to do what I say. I want that to soak. God, y'all... Y'all got a responsibility to God. Pastor Johnson. Pastor Nathaniel Johnson. I'm needing you all to be prayerful for me. As old I, as, old as I get, everything becomes sensitive to me. I find myself crying about sometimes sensitive things grandson playing football yesterday he, the first kickoff he's running down that thing and next thing you know he's hurt I sat as long as I could sit and some say get up go over and lay hands on his shoulder I don't take no blame for, for praying for people but I want God to start moving on my behalf how many of y'all want God to start moving don't you want to have the power of God when you need it, let something happen to somebody that's close to you. Then you will pray. Then you wish you had power with God. Then that's when you say, the Lord is my shepherd. But other than that, you just nonchalant. Come on, say amen. You got money, you got your bills paid, you get your stimulus check. Some of you don't, may not have enough money, but you're making ends meet. But when do you want the anointing of God in your life, though? You can't, listen to this, you can't do everything and, stay and think you can have the anointing. You can't do everything and think you're being anointed. We learn in Bible study that God allowed, listen to this, God allowed uh, Saul's sons to be anointed. They cleaned them up and sanctified them. But as soon as they, for a while, I guess they did okay. But after a while, you know what they did, Dennis? They started trying to do stuff their own way. And God killed them. You can't be in the church and think you're grown. I'm going to go when I want. I'm going to I ain't, I ain't, I'm not, not going to say nothing to nobody. Every member of this church should be saying, Bishop, I love you. I'm not going to be at church Sunday. Is it okay? That's what it should be. I don't want to be a part of a church like that. Yes, you do. You want to be a part because the church is a body of believers. You got one daddy here. Who's Ned? And when Ned is gone, he's going to have somebody else here. Might be you. But what goes around comes around. Until we can honor one another. If anybody has heard anything about Ned Johnson and you believe that it's the truth, come see Ned Johnson. I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. I won't want to be a part of nothing that the, the, the head is crooked. Can I get a witness? Ella Johnson is not the pastor. I am the pastor. Follow Bishop Johnson as he follow God. Am I perfect? No. Just got big eyes. And he didn't show me two more things that had big eyes. Oh, no, they have mercy. And I'm trying to live holy before God. I'm trying to love people. I'm trying to care for people. I'm trying to help people get out of debt. That's why we do. I want to help somebody. 
Amen. Now listen, you are not going to be attacked by no COVID. You already just said, unless God wants you to be attacked. If you die, you're going to die. Bottom line, just stay holy. How many of y'all scared of death? How many scared of dead folk? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ain't nobody put their hand up yet. Y'all some brave folk. Somebody, I ain't going in there. Ain't that, ain't that where he died? I ain't going to sleep in that room. No, I'm telling the truth. Had that fear. Sharon's mother died at our house up the street. And sometimes, uh, Tara, I walk through the door, and when I go upstairs, I look in there and see if she is she in the floor. <laughs> Bishop, you got demons. No, I ain't. I remember stuff. And when people are close to you, I can feel my mama now. I was thinking about her. I can feel my dad. If you love you, if you love Brother Mitchell, you can feel him. Sometimes his presence is just have I got any witness in this house? Am I going crazy? God. The folk that's dead went back to God. And God is living. You just don't see them in the physical no more. You just you don't see them in the physical no more. Because they're with God. And I told Sharon, I got to sit down, but I told Sharon, I love God, and, and, and I love my parents. They were good people. And when you got a good mom and you got a good dad, you got to reverence them. Hold on to them as long as you can hold on to them. How many of y'all, look at this. How many of you all, don't lie in fear. When your children were coming up, mamas, how many of y'all made cookies for your children? I ain't talking about go, go to the store and buy them. I'm talking make them from scratch. Look at the hands. They made them. They made them. Just don't. No, Lord have mercy. We don't need to make cookies no more. They got them in the store. They had them in the store back then. But my mom would work at the plant, come home from the plant, She'd get up and fix our breakfast and, and, and make lunch for us. And then on the table, she would leave a quarter for all of us who were still at home then. A quarter for me, a quarter for Lemon, a quarter for Yvonne. And then she would go to work and come back home. She would make cookies and put them in a big red jar, sugar cookies. And when she hugged you and when she touched you, she didn't just rub you like that. She had a touch that let you know that she loved you. Yeah. The church and the families, y'all got to start caring for one another. Stop being so mean. Y'all got to touch one another. Hug your children. I know like they old, they 16, 17, don't want to be, but they still want to be hugged. I want to be here, she said back there. Remember, the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. God is everything to me. Thank you, Bert, for playing. Appreciate you. Amen. I want Devin and Kevin back there to know. Stay in the middle of the road, son. Someone is getting ready to die close to us. And I want to let y'all know that. But we believe, listen to this, we believe that when you die, your spirit goes back to God, and God is not dead. So because we're going to do that, that's why we do what we do here now. Very quickly, we do blessed giveaway every Sunday because we love one another. In this church, we genuinely love one another. I care for you to pray. I love you. Love you, Sister Bland. Is Sister Bland here? There she is. And she came to noonday prayer the other day, knowing that she had been sick. God bless you, honey. Prayer changes things. 
I'm going to ask this. Um, um, what's her name back there? Sister Hop Day, but come up. Amen. Sister Hop Day, yeah. Come up. Come up and hold the basket for us today. Now, for those that don't know Sister Hop Day, she's been raised in church. Amen. Probably most of her life. And she's going to hold this basket for us. And she's right here, all the way from Denby to be in this church. Amen. And today, I want to help somebody. Very quickly, we're going to do this in about a few minutes. Sister Sharon, amen. Y'all know we do, right? So why don't y'all just come on now, put your gifts in the basket, then I'll pray over them. Amen. Very quickly. I didn't mean to take up that much time, but it's 1225. Amen. Come on. Come on. Drop your gifts in the basket. We want to help somebody. Oh, yeah. I want to help somebody. I want to help somebody. With some money. Woo, woo, with some money. Buy some milk. Buy some milk. Buy some bread. Have put a roof over someone's head. Buy some milk. Buy some bread. Buy some bread. Have put a roof over someone's head. I wanna help somebody. I wanna help somebody. I wanna help somebody. Buy some milk. Buy some milk. Buy some bread. Someone's head. someone's head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Don't forget, look. Don't forget you got to take your shot. I'm talking about Bishop's shot. God shot. Don't forget, I got to lay hands on that right shoulder before you leave here. Amen. Every Sunday, I want to I want to nort your right shoulder. Amen. So before you leave here, let Bishop nort your right shoulder. Amen. All right. Your right shoulder is where? Right. Over. Let me do yours now. In Jesus' name. All right. Let's let's do this often. Father, we thank you right now for these gifts. Let that person who most need receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Very quickly, we're going to mix them up real good. Real good. We're going to mix them up real good. Buy some milk. Buy some bread. Help put a roof over someone's head. In the name of Jesus. Deacon Rufus Holloway. You see that? All right. I ain't gonna see nothing else. Old folks said you ain't gotta eat a whole cow. No, you eating beef. In the name of Jesus, Deacon Rufus. And, and what the Lord is saying, what the Lord is saying is that Bishop needs you. All right. That's confirmation. All right. <laughs> okay, okay. That's pretty good, Bishop. Uh, this is Bishop Johnson's name and Sharon's name on here. $50. Buy a little milk. Buy a little bread. Help put a roof over someone's head. Buy some milk. Buy some bread. Put a roof over someone's head. Look at somebody said this for the whole basket. This is gonna be for the whole basket. 
I ain't gonna pull it. I put the 25 back in there. That's all right, you all right. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, Sister yeah. Mitchell, ain't the Lord good? Come on, when you say in the name of Jesus, I'm gonna pick up an envelope. But I gotta hear you, I gotta hear you now. She said in the name of Jesus, so I gotta pull this one. I don't know who this is. Who is that? Who? Timmy. No. That. Lord have mercy. Timmy Johnson, Ella Johnson. What am I gonna do with this? What am I gonna do? This is Timmy Johnson. Come on, basket. Come on, basket. Who's got the basket? Timmy, uh, your name was drawn. So you're supposed to get the whole basket. Do you, do you need it? What do you say? Yes. Yes. I say yes. What you need it for, Timmy? Just seriously. Just curious. Give your testimony. Because Brother Nigel said he got something that's going to even help you even more. Go ahead. Now t tell him. Your name was drawn. Why do you think the Lord drew your name? Well, because the Lord, uh, the Lord blessed me. You think the Lord blessed you? Yes. So why? You been sitting at home playing the game. <laughs> um, not because um, I, because I, I love Jesus. Your name was drawn, I guess. Yeah. You got anything else to say? Mm, not, not really. God loves you too. Mm. You know that? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, fill it with your Holy Ghost, Lord. Fill it with your Holy Ghost, God. God, you can touch it. Don't let it be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is for you, young man. The whole church gave this to you. Tell the church thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, you may be seated. Hallelujah. You know, I love you. I love you. I love you. Love today. Why? Because in such a special way. That's why I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart, heart is here. Come on, stand. My heart, my soul. Let me touch your right shoulder. Come here, let me touch your right shoulder. Come on. Yeah, come on, let me touch your right shoulder. Fine for me. Way back on Calvary. Oh, that's why I praise you. That's why I love you. That's why I love you, baby. That's why I love you. By your name. That's why my heart. My heart, my mind, my soul. For me, way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I praise you. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart.
That's why my heart That's why my heart is here That's why my heart That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Over and over again. Over and over again. Obedience brings a blessing. How many believe that? I'm not going to beg you to lay hands on you. If you fall in line, I'm going to do it. Other than that, that means, no, Bishop, I got mine last Sunday. The enemy, sitting right here, Father's Day, Deacon Matthew's son, came with his son and family here, set in this area. Well, you all know, they were on their way to the beach last Sunday, riding the motorcycle, and they had an accident. He almost lost his life. He lost his left arm. Uh, the wife was paralyzed from her chest down. Two beautiful children. I keep saying, Lord, cover us with your blood. Am I trying to scare y'all? No. I believe this. When I get in my car, I'll be saying, Lord, cover me with your blood. When I go to work and, and, and start that bus, I say, Lord, cover me. And sometimes I forget it to say it, but then in the course of the day, while I'm driving, it hit right. my head. And as soon as it hit me, I'll be saying, Lord, cover me with your blood. Why? Because you never know when things can happen to you. You may be the safest driver, but somebody could come and run smack in you because that's the way the Lord intended for you to die. You can get on the plane and it crashed. The Lord intended for you to die in that plane crash. Some may die on their sick bed. But church, let's get this thing right. Don't get it twisted. Let's commit ourselves to God. The preacher is just a preacher. Cry loud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Show my people their transgression and the house of Israel their sins. That's the preacher's job. I love you. If I didn't chastise you, then there's something wrong with me and I don't love you. Let's get right. Let's get right. Amen. God bless you. Let us stand at this time now. It's 25 or 1. And uh, pray for Deacon Matthews. That's where he is today. He and his wife went to Carolina to be with their son, grandson. Pray that God will continue to heal the wife. Let her be able to walk again. And bless his grandson. For those that don't know, Sister Bessie Brown, who used to sit right there, she had Marsh Jr., who sometime would come and cut grass for the church. Wouldn't ask for nothing. But he had two sons, Marsh Jr. did, and they both were smart in school. Both became doctors. But don't you know, just this week, one of the doctors lost his 30-year-old son. Money can't help you. Education can't help you. The only thing that can help is your faith in God. Y'all hear me? So don't keep playing with God. Like, I got to do this. I got to do that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what? All things will be added unto you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word because the Lord is our shepherd. And Lord, we pray now that you continue to let your grace and your mercy follow us in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Lord, Lord cover us, us with your blood. With your blood. In, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, amen. Tell somebody you love them.
Don't forget to wear your mask. Glory and honor and honor. They all 